What's up, Tuner Roll fam? 05 S2000, the Tuner Roll S2000, my beloved track car. I wanted to give you guys an official update and some things we're gonna be doing into it finally uh, for the next track day because I have abused this thing. Uh, if you all see from what last year when I first started tracking, I was on bone stock suspension. The only mods I had done was the RT660s and then the Hawk DTC60 pads on all four corners along with uh, drill and slide rotors and then RBF600 fluid. Since then, honestly, nothing has changed. I ran those tires to the ground. The only thing I did was uh, install the Olin's uh, coilovers and this thing has been ripping the track on the stock wheels. Pretty much those tires lasted me at least, I think 10 to 12 track sessions, a trip to the, to the uh, tail of the dragon and uh, the car has just been great. So one, I want to give you an update on how the car is after a lot of hard use. It's probably got at least a thousand miles of just straight track use. I don't drive it on the street too often. Uh, you know, just kind of give you the condition of the car, you know, suspension, engine, transmission, anything I'm feeling, just so you know if you ever want to convert your nice clean car into a track car, kind of what you expect. So before I get to the condition of the car, let's talk about this stuff, okay? I am still on the AP2 uh, uh, V1 wheels, which are the 17 inches. Uh, you can see the stock tire size, there's a 215, 45, 0.17. I finally took off the RT660s. Got some little saloons just to drive around the street. I wanted to enjoy for the summer. Uh, and the back stock tires are, uh, I think, 245, 40, 17. Where are they at? Yep, 245, 40, 17. These are the ones that came with the car They're from 2012. Uh, honestly, I just left the crappy ones in the back because I like just sliding it around a little bit on the street. It's fun. So brand new in the front, old in the back makes it for a fun little driving experience. But as you can see, we finally got some mods to complement uh, the pretty much almost stock car that we have. Uh, first, let's start off with the suspension stuff. Now, Bill Marcio from uh, Bill M Racing, he also has S2000, has been racing for years. He was like, dude, you got to do a front sway bar. Just the front, it's going to make the car a lot more easier to drive when it comes to just turning into a corner, right? You don't have to worry about it sliding out as much. Now, I don't have any error on the car, right? I'm not doing any fancy schmancy weight balancing, anything like that. My old tires were really bald. So like at the end of my track days, the last two sessions, I was just oversteering everywhere I went. And once the tires got really, really warmed up and nice, then it would finally grip. I'd get like one or two good sessions, but I was really lacking, you know, in that tire setup and I just wanted less oversteer. So uh, this, we went ahead and got a Megan Racing uh, Sway bar, and I know there's better options out there. I forgot the one that's like a lot more expensive, but everyone uses. But for me, like I said, I'm not planning on keeping the car too much longer. It's a little budget, you know, race car for me. So we went ahead and got the Megan Racing Sway Bars. I think they were like 200 or less for the Sway Bar and the bushings. They look great, right? They get the job done, right? At the end of the day, it's just a piece of metal. Now I know, you know, you can adjust these and really get the fine tuning of it. But, you know, Bill was pretty confident that, hey, just throw this on, you're gonna feel a difference right away. You're gonna be able to turn your car into corners without having too much to worry about sliding out. You know, which uh, for me, you know, that was nice driving it on the factory suspension. I feel like I really got to learn uh, more as a driver, right? Driving this car rather than the car driving me, like if I had a Porsche or something, I really had to like, handle the crap out of this S2K and I truly feel like it made me a better driver. So comes with new bushings, the 32 millimeter uh, sway bars. We're about to put those on. Uh, I'm gonna try the stock end links, but I do have a pair of adjustable end links as well uh, in my trailer. I forgot them that we could throw on. Uh, just two mounting holes, so should be pretty straightforward. Along with that, what I wanna do is I wanna finally add camber to the vehicle. So what I did was I got these SPC, uh, the specialty products company, upper ball joints. Now you can see one is still in the package, one is not, so I can see, you can kind of see what you're getting. Uh, weird thing with this package is it came with like a bunch of weird sand in there. I don't know if it's like the silica, I guess it was a silica gel that just broke. I guess that makes more sense, but yeah, uh, I don't, I guess we're gonna read these instructions right and see how to install these. It's my first time really installing adjustable ball joints on the car. <clears throat> uh, so it looks like it's pretty much, you got the lock nut, washer, you got top plate then you put this plate on the control arm itself. The ball joint goes underneath. Oh, okay, so I see. <clears throat> so we're essentially putting this plate on, <clears throat> kind of pressing, I guess, the plate on, and then the ball joint kind of just uh, <clears throat> slides along that plate. I guess that's how that works. So 
Ah, that makes sense. The ball joint now bolts up, and that's how you get the movement. And then the plate is what's going to be on the upper control arm. That makes a lot of sense. Really cool concept. I would say the only uh, fear I would have with this is if this loosens up. So I probably honestly, uh, once the alignment is done, maybe put some Loctite on here. So, you know, I'm not obviously a lot of G-forces turning and stuff. So that's probably the only weak point of these, uh, I would say about the upper control I'm set up is worrying about the bolt loosening up and then like your camera going all funky. But aside from that, I think it's a great way to add more front camber. We're gonna try to go with like closer to the three in the front. Right now I'm literally running zero front camber. And I'll show you guys why in a second. Uh, and then last but not least, we've got the new tire setup. So we opted to go with some slicks just because this is more of a track car and Honestly, I just wanted to experience it. I know these don't last a long time. I don't really drive the car too much on the street. If I did, I have those tires now, right? I could swap back and forth. I actually have a second set of wheels. Just gotta get one rim that was bent, but I'll put these on the second set of wheels. And uh, yeah, I opted to go with the Toyo Proxies double R's. I was gonna go with the single R's, which are more street friendly, but I'm like, again, I wanna just experience an almost full slick, right? Something just super aggressive on the track with this specific car so I could feel the difference between like a RT660 or a, a Bridgestone RE71 RS, which is more of like a very, very, very aggressive summer tire that's really good on the track versus a straight, right, the slick. So I'm really excited about running these, feeling the grip, feeling how the car is. I know the car is obviously gonna take a lot more stress now, right, suspension, brakes, all that. So I'm gonna be changing the fluid out with the RBF 700 just because I honestly never changed the fluid out since I did it the first time and it's been through so many track days. But really excited about the tires. The size I ended up going with was the 225-45-17s up front. So I'm uh, 10 section width wider than factory. And then I get 255-40-17 in the rear, which is again, 10 more in the section width. So we just went a little bit wider. I stay with the staggered setup just because I don't mind it. And I wanted to keep the factory wheels. Uh, so. I decided, hey, why complicate it? Get wheels, get more deep into the car, right? Trying to go square set up and rolling fenders. Just, let's do it this way. The car's been going great. I'll be happy with it. Uh, and the reason I did the 255-40 and the 225-45 is the diameters are almost identical, right? Uh, I was gonna go 235-40 in the front, but then I was like, hey, am I gonna have too much sidewall roll out on the wheel? Then the diameter was gonna be bigger in the front than it was gonna be in the rear. And, this just made the most sense to me. Uh, tires are super freaking stiff. Uh, yeah, you can just, you can tell, right? They're straight race tires. So can't wait to get these on, uh, try those out. And uh, last but not least, the brakes. These pads and rotors in the back are the same ones I put on when I first started tracking. Haven't replaced the pads, haven't replaced the rotors. They lasted that long, guys. And I have about, what, like, Looks like I got about three millimeters left on this side and about two millimeters left on this side. So this side is definitely a lot more worn out. That's the reason I finally want to replace them. Could I get one more track day out of them? Um, honestly, maybe, but right when your pads are lower, your calipers are bound to get hotter. You're going to boil up your fluid a lot easier, faster. Uh, so I didn't want to risk it at all. Uh, you know, with it being at two millimeters, I'm just going to Replace the pads while I have them. No rotor cracks ever on the back, but you can see the rotor is very like rough. So I'm gonna keep these rotors as spares in case they do ever crack. And I got some new rotors I'm gonna throw on with the new pads just because I feel like the car deserves it, right? I, what, 11, 10 to 12 track days, the whole t till the Dragon trip, and I'm on the same set. Like, heck yeah, you did your job. I love the Hawk DTC 60s, highly recommend them uh, for, you know, cars like this. And the front pads. This is the most problematic thing I have with this car. I am on my second set of DTC-60s. The first set saw abuse. They were beat up. I really used them until I couldn't use them anymore. But it wasn't the pads I had issues with, it was the rotors. I probably cracked at least four or five sets of rotors while I was running the drilled and slotted R1 concepts, right? Essentially these. I had these and then I had the, like, the black treated version of those as well. And at, towards the end, like as I got better at driving and I got more aggressive with the brakes, I was pretty, pretty much tracking them the second or third session of every track day. So I got sick of it. Uh, people just such, such as running blanks. Someone did say go get the gyro set up uh, with just the slots. So I was about to do it, but it's $800 for the first purchase. And then $500 to replace the 
disc every time. With me not wanting to keep the car, I just couldn't justify spending $800 on front rotors. Uh, but the person who did run those did highly recommend them because he was like, hey, once I switched to gyro, never had to worry about cracking uh, rotors again. They last a long time. And you don't have to worry about ducting. With this, ducting helps a lot, right? Uh, or you're supposed to kind of duct the brakes to help keep them cool so they don't crack. But, uh, you know, he was like, yo, man, that's all, like, in my opinion, that's gimmicks. Like, yeah, sure, it'll help a little bit, but then you got to worry about ducks falling and getting tangled up in your wheel well. He's like, get the gyros. I never had ducks. They were great. So if you are doing an S2K track car and you're watching this, I just highly recommend just getting those gyros, you know, buy once, cry once type deal. Because for me, I'm not planning on keeping the car. I'm running these blanks. These blanks have lasted, I believe, two track days so far. No cracks yet to be seen. Knock on rotor. Uh, so they don't look too bad, right? This little stuff is usually, you know, you common for track type braking. Uh, but yeah, the front's definitely, you know, your back brakes, you put them on once, you don't have to worry about it too much. The fronts, I highly recommend gyro disc with some, honestly, Hockey 260s are pretty good. Or is the other one, I forgot what they're called, that a lot of people run. So, you know, pick your poison. Uh, yeah. Aside from that, I'm going to just talk about the engine, trans, suspension setup. With the suspension setups, you saw I installed the Olins. Didn't make any adjustments, random factory settings, and I did faster at every single track I've ever been to. Had car handle much better, a lot more easier to handle. Kind of the same thing I'm expecting when I install the sway bar. Uh, so the suspension's great. Highly recommend the Olins from the factory. You can put them on any S2K and just have a blast at the track. Now, the alignment in the back, I did have camera. I believe I have almost two in the back right now. You can see, you know, the kind of see the camera right here. Because my adjustments were there, I was able to get that. Issue with the front was I had an issue with, uh, which one was this? This would be for, I believe, W camber a little bit. I believe that is, uh, that adjustment should be some, some camber. And then your second one right here for the caster. Uh, the caster adjustment on this side, the, oh, which side was it? It was one of these sides. Oh, right here. Yeah, you can see there's a gap right here. So, uh, I don't know what happened, but it wasn't able to adjust on this slot for some reason. Uh, presumably maybe, uh, cause this is a rebuilt title. Oh yeah, right here. This is what it was. I'm assuming whenever this person crashed, this is a rebuilt title car. You can see what happened with the subframe here. So that caused this to bend down and not have a full caster adjustment. So to keep the caster even, we couldn't add any camber because uh, you know, obviously the camber adjusts a little bit of the caster, all the geometry. So uh, actually what I'm gonna try doing right now is potentially just try to bend that piece up to get it to look like this. So I do have full caster adjustment, which would pretty much just be like, what, heat up and hammer. But I just try to shape that back and hopefully it's strong enough. And if it's not, I could probably tack weld this. I have a welder. That's probably what I'm gonna do. We're probably gonna heat this up right now. Or take the control arm up, unbolt, unbolt, swing the control arm up, heat it up, hammer it up as much as we can, then weld this back in place so we have a caster adjustment. But scratch all that, right? Even if I didn't do that, I had the upper ball joints now so I could just control the camber straight over here. Okay, so hopefully you won't have to adjust the caster too much. Uh, whereas, you know, when you're doing this, it's kind of messing with the geometry of the lower control arm. This is just doing upper, right? So it should be a lot more straightforward, which is why I also want to get the upper ball joint specifically on this car. So, uh, yeah, aside from that, it's been great. Uh, let's talk about the engine and trans. So a uh, big thing I bragged about on this car was I had an absolutely no oil leaks when I got this car. It was like, it's a low mileage car, it's rebuilt. I hate buying rebuilt title cars. The reason I bought this one is you can see how freaking clean it is. Right? It was just way too clean for me to pass up for the price I got it at when I got it. I'm like, no oil leaks on the engine, it's low miles, it drove pretty much perfect, there's no rust, no BS. I'm like, that's what I need, right? It's not my main car, it's gonna be my little side fun car, right? I had the GTRs for my main cars. Uh, so, engine and trans have been holding up great. Like, honestly, the first three track days, I didn't even drop a speck of oil, burn a speck of oil or anything. Now, uh, maybe a little bit it burns off, uh, not too crazy still, you know, you don't have to be in the crap out of the car. I don't have any oil consumption issues. Uh, still no leaks. I guess, the, you know, Jane both seeping a little bit, probably just because I didn't replace that. So I'll, I'll replace a crush washer. Uh, you can see no leaks up there. So the engine's been running perfect. 
I would say if I did feel anything, uh, it was just like here and there, maybe a little bit more vibrations, maybe from the, you know, uh, trans mounts obviously being stock, engine mounts being stock. I'm sure they might be just slightly compromised. I feel a little bit more vibration, if anything. Uh, but not, again, nothing too serious. I still drive the car, it's still a blast. Uh, diff feels great. Transmission, I would say I haven't changed the fluid yet. I'm gonna definitely change the fluid now. I used Honda fluid before. Transmission maybe is a little, does feel a little bit more notchier. Uh, I don't feel at all when racing. When I'm racing, like the transmission does what it needs to do. I never have any issues mis shifting, like it just does it. I would say more for normal street driving, it does feel a little bit more uh, like just notchier. Uh, so I'm gonna change the fluid out. Probably gonna run the Honda one just for now, but you know, people have recommended like what the Ford stuff, uh, there's so much other stuff you can run the transmissions. I just like keeping it as factory as possible just because. Uh, yeah, and like I said, the diff is great. I changed the diff fluid out at one point. I probably will do it again soon as well. Uh, probably just with the Honda stuff again. But yeah, as far as this reliability goes, me being the crap out of it, it's been great. Like I said, you know, it's been great. We did the spark plug once. Uh, I changed out the PCV valve. And uh, yeah, the engine rips. That's, you know, that's pretty much all I gotta say about that. You can see, right, still great underneath here. Suspension looks great, everything else looks great, so. That's a little bit of this on the S2000. On Monday, August 19th, we're gonna be at Audubon Full with my new setup, uh, with the front sway bar, with the brand new tires, uh, with the track alignment now from being zero camber because there's literally zero camber in the front. That's obviously not good for track driving, even though the car still did great. Uh, you know, adding that aggressive camera in the front, I'm really excited to see. I am scared that you know, it's gonna have to get used to the car again, but hey, that's what's about growing, right? So just want to give you all an update on the car. Uh, all this stuff is just from, I don't even know, this thing ripped out one day at the track. Who knows what this is from? And uh, this front bumper definitely got beat up on the track. I'll tell you that. If you're tracking your car, I highly recommend PPF for protecting the front bumper. Uh, but besides that, besides the front bumper issue, everything else like it's solid on the car. Uh, yeah, so. There you have it all. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned. More track days coming up. Let's see how long these tires last. Put in the comments how long you think these tires are going to last you uh, or last me. Obviously not going to last as long as the RT660s. And also, let me know what tires I should run next. I'm thinking the RE71 RS is if I keep this car or if I switch to the Mark V Super as planned. Still the RE71 RS is. So uh, see you all in the next video. Peace.